All right, guys, we're back to talk some more about chemical equilibrium. We want to discuss the equilibrium constant now. Um, what's the equilibrium constant all about? Well, some chemical reactions, whenever they take place and they reach chemical equilibrium, when that curve, those two curves meet and they flatten out, at that point, for some chemical reactions, the concentration of the reactants is still very high. Um, but for other chemical reactions, the concentration um, will be very low for the reactants and the concentration of the products will be very high once it reaches chemical equilibrium. So, so we have this idea of the equilibrium constant that kind of tells us that relationship of the concentration of the products versus the reactants at that state of equilibrium. And so what the, uh, the, the equation for the equilibrium constant represented by a capital K here, um, what that equation says is that for a reaction that's in this form, we've, we've seen that form before we used it for the rate equation, for example, um, if it's in this form, then the concentration of, of the products raised to the power of the matching coefficient for that particular product, those concentrations multiplied together and then divided by the concentrations of the reactants multiplied together will give us the uh, equilibrium constant. Okay, and so just to make sure you understand what each of these things mean, this is the concentration of substance C in this equation raised to the power of little c, uh, the, the, the coefficient um, in front of c there. And what the EQ means is this is the concentration of c at equilibrium. This is the concentration of D at equilibrium, okay? Um, so that's the way the equilibrium constant works. It, 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 we can look at that value and kind of instantly know something about the relationship between the concentrations of the, the reactants and the products at equilibrium. So the best way to um, you know, learn more about this is let's do an example, all right? Hello, chemistry tutor. Wow, sir, it is a big honor. I, <laughs> I am a huge fan. What are you uh, up to? We were just talking about chemical equilibrium. Um, well, I, you know, I don't even know what to say. We've never actually met. Uh, uh, my name's Mr. Walker. It, it, it's, it's nice to meet you. Why are you here? Kevin Chemistry is just making the rounds to encourage tutors at this difficult time. I see. Um, yeah, we were discussing the equilibrium constant. Oh, the equilibrium constant. I love that one. In fact, I got a little joke for you. Back, nope, that's not it. Forward and back and forward they go. Where are they stop? The equilibrium constant knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're you're really, I didn't know you were also a comedian. <laughs> That's, that's too good. Um, well, uh, would you be interested in doing the example for oh, us? Wait. Oh, okay. Notice both ears. When both ears are twitching, that means there's a double displacement reaction taking place within a two mile radius of my position. I must away. Yeah, okay, sure, I understand. Just real quick, I was wearing a shirt like yours the other day, and some people actually accused me of, of, of like, you know, Captain Chemistry being my alter ego, right? So could we just sort of debunk that theory and, and get a quick picture together? That would, that would be great, sir. Well, of course, anything to help out a chemistry tutor. Thanks so much. Huge fan. Huge fan. Love your work. All right. Have a good one. All right, thanks so much, chemistry tutor, and keep up the great work. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that was Captain Chemistry. Who would have thought when my day started that it would end by me meeting Captain Chemistry? Uh, uh, I don't know what's going to top that out. I'm never going to wash this hand again. Uh, I shook hand, hands with Captain Chemistry. I hope, his, I hope his gloves were clean and didn't have any 
corrosive chemicals on them. Anyway, um, so let's get back to example 16.1. We wanted to use the equilibrium constant, and that example says, a chemist performs the following reaction, starting with NO and H2, each at a concentration of 0 0.100 molarity, and both products, both products at a concentration of zero molarity. All right, so we're given this equation, 2NO plus 2H2, um, those are the reactants, yields N2 plus 2H2O. Okay, and then they tell us the concentration of each one at equilibrium. It says at equilibrium, the concentrations of NO and H2 are both 0 0.024 molarity. The concentration of N2 is 0 0.038 molarity. And the concentration of H2O is 0 0.06 molarity. What is the equilibrium constant for the reaction? Okay, so, um, so we've got that information written down here. And so remember, the equilibrium constant is going to be the concentration of um, N2 raised to the power at equilibrium, raised to the power of its coefficient, which is just one in this case, times the concentration of H2O raised to the second power because of the two coefficient in front of it, that, that concentration at equilibrium, all of that divided by the concentration of NO, the first of the reactants raised to the power of two because of its coefficient, that concentration at equilibrium times the concentration of H2 also raised to the second power, so that concentration at equilibrium, right? All right, so we, we, um, we're going to fill in our values here. This, this first one here is 0 0.038 raised to the first power. Um, you know, let's, let's write down the units there so we don't make sure we get our, uh, our units correct. Um, this one is 0 0.076 squared. Molarity, I keep forgetting that unit. This one here is 0 0.024 squared. Ah, why can't I remember to put the ohm in there, guys? 0 0.024 ohm squared, and then that times 0 0.024 ohm. Finally got the unit on that last one. All right, so we punch all of that in our calculator, and we come up with a value of 660. But uh, the reason I wanted to write the units down is make sure we get our units right. On top here, we've got m cubed, molarity cubed, right? And on the bottom, we've got molarity to the fourth. So our final unit, it, it's going to be 660 with a unit of 1 over molarity. All right? And so that's our final value there. Um, so j notice, just like when we were using the rate equation, the unit here is not going to always be the same for every equation, right? So you have to make sure that you cancel out your molarity units appropriately. Um, so that's pretty much it. The other thing that, I, that we just need to make sure that we remember, and I'll write this down so that, um, so that we're clear, that is that the value, the value of K um, for a given reaction changes with temperature, all right? We said the same thing when we used the rate equation. Um, so both of these are similar in that sense. The, it will, the value will change for the reaction with temperature, and also, just like with the rate equation, you have to pay attention to your units and make sure that you're canceling out your molarity units uh, properly. Th that unit may vary between equations, okay? All right, that's it for this lecture. I will see you next time, and... I'm going to go tell my wife about Captain Chemistry. Honey? Honey?